Here's everything you need to know about Wuthering Waves Patch 1.1. Wuthering Waves Patch 1.1 will come out on June 28th, and maintenance time will take 7 hours. For compensation, you'll get 300 Astrite and 2 Crystal Solvents. You can see the maintenance time on the screen right now. As for the rewards, there's going to be 2 login events that will give you a total of 40 summons. You heard me right, 40 summons! In total, you'll get 15 Radiant Tides, which are the limited pulls, 10 Forging Tides, which are the limited weapon pulls, and 15 Lustrous Tides, which are the standard banner pulls. The first login event is just a 7 day login event, so make sure you log in every day to claim your free summons. There'll be a total of 10 summons on this login event. The next login event is a special check-in event, so make sure you log in on these dates to claim your free pulls. July 4th, July 6th, and July 10th. Of course these dates might be different depending on your time zone, so please check online to see if you have the correct time and what time zone you're in. For, as for new characters, we will have two new 5 star resonators coming out in patch 1.1. First we'll have Jin Z in the first half, and then the Changli in the second half. Jin Z is a spectral element main DPS unit that uses a broad blade. I have a video covering her playstyle and abilities on my channel, so be sure to check it out. Cheng Li will be coming in the second half of 1.1 and will be a fusion main DPS character that uses a sword. Details on her kit will be released closer to release date. As for new weapons, of course these new characters will also come with their signature weapons, and Jin Z's signature weapon is the 5 star Broadblade Ages of Harvest. It has a crit rate substat and its ability gives you attribute damage bonus and resin skill damage bonus. Chang Li's signature weapon is a sword named Blazing Brilliance, and we will get more information about it closer to her release date. With this new patch also comes a new area, Mount Firmament. With the new area comes new events. There will be new side quests and exploration events in this new area, as well as a new photo collection event that gives you Astrite, character EXP, weapon EXP, and echo EXP materials. There will also be a new Depths of Elusive Realm that rewards you with Astrite, Echoes, Echo Tuners, Echo EXP, and more. In this new area, there will also be a new Hologram Challenge, with Crownless as the boss, so that'll be great for my hardcore players out there. There'll also be what looks like to be a Spin the Wheel Commission event, where you can get even more in-game items. There'll also be new exploration puzzles and things to explore. This area comes with new enemies, and new enemies comes with new echoes. There'll be a new boss in this area, Sentinel Jue. Jue will be a 4 cost echo, and something you might have missed in the trailer is that Jue is not a transformation echo, meaning that you can attack with your character simultaneously with Jue. This is pretty game changing because most of the 4 cost echoes with the exception of the Bellborn Geocolone, which is a support echo, and the Mech Abomination, which really isn't that good honestly, are all transformation echoes that lock your character in the echo form. So a great example of this would be Thundering Mephis. Thundering Mephis has a 6 string attack, and in order to get the full buffs of the echo, you need to hit the last attack. So it locks your character in the echo form, you have to do all 6 attacks, and it's kind of a pain in the ass honestly. So with Jue, you don't have to worry about that, you just press the button, and he does his thing, and you can attack with your character while he does his thing. So he'll be an amazing echo for special DPS characters, aka Gen Z, because he is a summonable echo, and will not lock your character in echo form, which is great. There will also be new 1 cost and 3 cost echoes. For the 1 cost echoes, you have the Dwarf Cassowary, which is a bird type echo, chicken type echo. It comes in the Sierra Gale set, and Rejuvenating Glow set. You have the Clang Bang Gang Bang which is these little ice cube guys. They come in the Celestial Light set and the Freezing Frost set. Then you have the Lava Larva, this little male genitalia looking thing. And he comes in the Endless Vibration set and the Molten Rift set. As for 3 cost echoes, which are, they're pretty cool in my opinion, you have the Glacial Dreadmane, which is like this wolf type monster echo. And it will come in the Moonlight Cloud set and the Freezing Frost set. Then you have this tiger type echo called the Light Crusher. And this will only come in the Celestial Light set. Then you finally have the Luma Scale Construct, which turns you into this big big sword, I think. And it comes in the Void Thunder set and the Freezing Frost set. So, there's new 3 cost echoes and 1 cost echoes for all those sets. And that pretty much wraps it up for patch 1.1. Let me know what you're most excited for. And also, let me know who you're rolling for in patch 1.1. Are you rolling for... Are you Team Jinzi or are you Team Chang Li? Let me know in the comments down below. Me personally, I thought I was Team Jinzi. But after seeing the trailer and Chang Li, I, I think she's just gorgeous, man. I might have to save for her instead. I think my plan is, I'm going to roll for Gen Z, and then if I miss the 50-50, it is what it is, I might, I'm just going to save and then get Chang Li guaranteed when she comes out. So that's going to be my plan, probably. Uh, let me know what your plan is in the comments down below. As always, like if you liked the video, and subscribe to follow my next video. I'll see you on the next one.